Praise the Lord. Tout le monde gloire à Dieu. Impact. Impact. Change. To Trans change the world. Transformer pour transformer le monde. The changers are here today. Les transformateurs sont ici aujourd'hui. What is the changer there? Où est ce transformateur? The hand of the Lord will come upon you. La main du Seigneur va se poser sur toi. He will change you for the better. Il va te transformer en meilleur. And then he will send you forth. Et il va t'envoyer into your world. Dans le monde. To be an agent of change. Pour que tu sois un agent de change. I Moi will be je serai an agent of change. Un agent de changement. Let me hear my daughter's voice. Que j'entende la voix de ma fille d'abord. You are a daughter, you are a girl, you are a woman, you are a lady, you are a sister. Une femme, une demoiselle, I Moi. What are the ladies there? Où sont ces demoiselles? I Moi. I am here. Je suis ici. To be equipped. Pour être équipé. To be changed. Pour être transformé. And to go and change my world. Pour aller transformer mon monde. Now I'm going to the tenor voice. I'm going to the baritone. I'm going to the bass. Maintenant, je m'adresse aux hommes, ceux qui ont la basse, ceux qui Are the young porte. men there? Est-ce que les jeunes sont là? My sons are. You there. Mon fils, es-tu là? I am here today. Je suis ici aujourd'hui. To be changed. Pour être transformé. So that afin I can be an agent of change. Un agent de transformation. Everybody together. Tous ensemble, disons-le. Tout le monde ensemble maintenant. Everybody. Tout le monde. We are here. Nous sommes ici. The Lord will change us. Le Seigneur va nous transformer. We will change our world. Nous allons transformer notre Don't monde. Look for the change of Cameroon in any other place. The people to change Cameroon, they are here with me today. En ce qui concerne la transformation du Cameroun, ceux qui vont le faire sont ici avec moi aujourd'hui. Everywhere, every nation. Dans tout endroit, dans toute nation. The young people. Les jeunes. The Lord is putting the world in your hand. Le Seigneur vous confie le monde. In all the nations. Dans toutes les nations. We will change the world. Nous allons transformer le monde. Change the world for the better. Transformer le monde en change un meilleur endroit. Change the world for the Higher. Changer le monde dans un endroit plus haut. The Lord will use you. Le Seigneur va t'utiliser. Don't look back, look forward. Ne regarde pas derrière mais devant. Are you there? Es-tu là? Raise up your hand. Lève la main. Father, in Père, Jesus' name. Au nom de Jésus. We come today. Nous venons aujourd'hui. We present ourselves before you. Nous nous présentons devant toi. Without any reservation. Sans réserve. We are praying, O Lord. Nous prions, Seigneur. Take everyone. Change tout le monde. Every man, every woman. Tout homme, toute femme. Young adults. Les jeunes adultes. Teenagers. Adolescents. Children. Enfants. Take everyone. Change chacun. Do what needs be done. Fais ce qui doit être fait. Change us. Change nous. That we may go out. Afin que nous sortions. And change our world. Pour transformer notre monde. We give you the glory. Nous te rendons la gloire. It will happen. Cela va se passer. In Jesus' name we pray. Au nom de Jésus, nous avons prié. God bless you. You can sit down. Que Dieu vous bénisse. Asseyez-vous. We're talking about change. Nous parlons de la transformation. Everything in the world has to have a change. Tout dans le monde doit être transformé. Do you know that the cells in our body change? The cells change. Est-ce que vous savez que les cellules de nos corps changent? As we're growing up from a baby. Comme nous grandissons en tant que bébé. A toddler. En tant qu'enfant. An infant. En tant que bébé. A boy, a girl. Garçon, fille. A teenager. Adolescent. Adolescent. Les adolescents. A young adult. Les jeunes adultes. Changes are taking place. Les changements se produisent. Internally. 
internally. Our cells are changing. Nous même nous changeons. Do you know the cells in the brain? Est-ce que vous savez que les cellules du cerveau and the connection? Et les connexions. Do you know that changes are taking place every time? Est-ce que vous savez que les changements se produisent chaque Some fois? Some redundant cells are being washed up. Certaines cellules redondantes libèrent la voie. New voix. cells are coming in place of them. Et les nouvelles cellules prennent corps. You may not see the change. Vous ne pouvez pas voir ce changement. Except you look at your face. À moins de regarder votre visage. As an infant. En tant que enfant. Then you keep that photo. Et vous gardez cette photo. And you look at the face again when you become 12 or 13. Et vous regardez encore cette photo quand vous avez 12 ou 13 you ans. You will see a remarkable change that has taken place. Vous allez constater que un changement remarquable Keep s'est produit. Gardez cette photo. And then look at yourself at 25. Et regardez-vous à 25 ans. A remarkable change has happened again. Un changement remarquable s'est encore and produit. And then you come to your 50s or 60s. Et quand vous avez 50, 60 ans. And look at the texture of your hair. Et vous regardez votre chevelure. Look at your facial appearance. Vous regardez votre apparence faciale. Look at the way you walk. Vous regardez votre démarche. A remarkable change has taken place. Un changement remarquable s'est produit. You're now in your 70s and your 80s and the 90s. Maintenant vous avez 70, 80, 90 ans. And you look at your face again. Vous regardez encore votre visage. And you compare with the previous photographs. Et vous comp- Pareil avec les autres photos. Change. Le changement. And it is that kind of change. Et c'est ce genre de changement. That actually brings you to understand your world enough to make a change in your world. C'est ça qui vous fait comprendre le monde dans lequel vous vivez pour le changer. In our language. Dans notre langage. As a baby when you needed something. En tant que bébé, quand tu avais besoin you de quelque scream, chose, you kick, you cry. Tu criais, tu te battais, tu pleurais. And mama will know you need something. Et mama sait que tu veux quelque chose. As you come to seven, eight years of age. À sept, huit ans. Your means of communication changes. Ton moyen de communication change. If you cry, if you kick like you were when you were an infant, you won't get what you are asking for. You change your language, and mama, papa cannot give you what you want. Si tu continues à pleurer et à te débattre quand, comme quand tu étais bébé. Mama ne va pas comprendre que tu as besoin de quelque chose. In your twenties, your communication changes again. À 20 ans, ton moyen de communication change. You need anything from anyone in your twenties. There's a way to ask, very different from when you're an infant. À 20 ans, quand tu veux quelque chose, tu demandes différemment par rapport quand tu as, quand tu étais petit. Now you are out of school. Maintenant, tu as fini avec tes études. You are working. Tu and you need something. Et tu as de Your communication chose. to ask and to receive everything changes again. Pour change there is change in life. Il y a le dans la uh, vie. Look at the car we're using. La qu'on that car needs a change. Cette a d'un it's not moving well again. Elle ne se déplace plus bien. It's not running smooth again. Elle ne roule plus aisément. The jerks we experience. Le changement qu'on espère. It wasn't there at the beginning. N'était pas là au début. Now we need a change. Maintenant il faut un changement. If you only paint the car, the change you want will not happen. Si tu te contentes de peindre la voiture, ce changement ne va pas se produire. That's an external change. C'est là un changement externe. Painting the car. Peindre la voiture. Washing the car. La laver. And uh, washing even on the knees. Et même laver le bas de la voiture. That will not give you the sound and the speed that you need. Cela ne va pas te permettre de rouler à la vitesse que tu veux. The great change we need. Le grand changement que nous voulons. Is to go inside. Consiste à aller à l'intérieur. Change the engine. Pour changer le moteur. Change your engine. Change ton moteur. That's what drives the car. C'est ce qui 
Pousse la voiture à marcher. The steering is good. Le volant est bien. The seats are good. The color of the outside is good. Then you come in. You put in the ignition key. The thing is, they jack in. What do I do? How do I go about this? Change the engine. Today, the Lord will change the engine of your life. Wash your face. Anoint your face with ointment. That won't change anything. Redo your air. Put it this way, put it that way. That will not change the engine. And try to copy somebody. He walks that way, talks that way. You will not have enough change. It's the engine we need to go in and change. And when the engine is changed, when the inner man is changed, when the heart is changed, you will run fast. You didn't hear me? I said you will run fast. You will, you will go far. Changed to change the world. I'm talking to you on the subject delivered and destined to change the world. You are delivered. And then you now follow your destiny to change the world. We're looking at Romans chapter 12, and I'm reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 12, reading from verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore. I'm pleading with you. And I come to plead with you today. I know what it means to be a failure. And I know what it means to be a success. So what helped me, the key for change, is what I'm bringing to you. And I'm pleading and begging of you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present yourselves unto God a living sacrifice. And then it says, reasonable, reasonable service. That will be your reasonable service. I want to be a change agent in the world. Yes, the Lord will touch and the Lord will transform my inner man. But to change anything, I have to use my hand. To change anything, I have to open my ears. To change anything, I have to speak out. To change anything, I have to have the ability to move. So, he changes my heart. And I present the members of my body unto God so that I can have, I can do, I can perform a reasonable service. And then it tells us in verse 2. It says, I'm being not conformed to this world. But be transformed. But be changed, but be renewed by the renewing of your mind. Our mind has to be renewed. 
And it is that renewal and reformation of the mind that actually will make us a change agent in the world. It says that ye may prove what is that good and also acceptable and the perfect will of God. Today, you will present yourself before the Lord. He will change you. You will have such wisdom, such power, such insight. You get to this part of the world and the Lord said, that's your destiny. You are going to change that place. Because it is as you come to the Lord and the Lord releases you to your world that the change will take place. In Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 3, it says, Grace be unto you and peace from God. Peace in your heart, grace in your life, comes from heaven, comes from your creator. And, and as we're talking about changing the world, we need to touch the creator first. And the creator needs to transform us first. And he touches us because of grace. Is no respecter of persons. It's not impartial. He gives us grace. He gives us peace from the Father. And then from the Lord Jesus Christ. Who gave himself for our sins. God, what are we talking about sin? All I want is change. All I want is to go and change the world. Sin builds a barrier between sinful man and a holy God. It builds a great wall, deep, thick, and high between man and God. Every sin man commits is a block of the wall. It, bring, it brings the, it, the brick, it brings another block, and it cements everything. And now there's a wall of demarcation between him, who can, between God, who can change him, and man who wants to be changed. That's why Christ has come. That wall of partition. That wall of demarcation. That wall of separation. Between you and the almighty God. Who can bring a change in your life. Jesus Christ died for you. So that he breaks down that wall of separation between you and God. He gave himself for our sins. That he might deliver us from the present, this present evil world. And he now reconciles us. And it's according to the will of God. Our Father, the wall is broken down. So you can touch God and you can reach God. And God can touch you and reach you. God is ready to change you now. And then after today, you are ready to go and change your world. 
delivered and destined to change the world. There are three things we're looking at before we pray. Number one, grace. Number two, goal. Number three, glory. As we're thinking about the change that comes from heaven. Number one, grace. Number two, goal. The goal God has set beyond any goal we have set for ourselves, the goal. Number three is the glory. The Lord will take you from where you are. You are going on to glory. I am going to glory. See the way you say your own. When I say, when I, say I am going to glory, I say it with conviction. I say it with loud confession. I say it with determination. I want the devil to hear that I am not going to be in an entity here on earth. I want everybody to uh, hear. I'm not going to be meandering here and there. I am going to glory. You will get there. It's number one, the grace that changes our inner world. There is the inner world. If that inner world is not changed, we cannot change the outside world. The inner world of my thoughts, the inner world of my discouragement, the inner world of my self-talk, what I talk to myself, my mind is talking to me every time. The inner world of my regrets. If that inner world is not changed, we cannot change any other thing. Number two, the goal of changing the immediate world. There's the immediate world. The one that surrounds you every time. And you cannot cross that immediate world to go outside far. Number one is the inner world. Number two is the immediate world. Number three is the glory in changing the indifferent world. There is uh, an indifferent world. Go up, go down, I don't care. Move forward, move back, I don't care. Learn so you can become more significant in the world. I don't care. Live an excited life. I don't care. And then be excited in life, be passionate in life. Do something that you will make a mark in the world. They say, I don't care. And the glory we have is to go to that indifferent world. The world that does not care. And then have the wisdom, have the vision, have the ability, have the skill, have the communication to change that indifferent world.
Number one, the grace. Number two, the goal. Number three, the glory. Let's come to number one. Number one is the grace that changes the inner world. That's your own inner world. The change begins with you. The change begins with me. And if we're going to be agents of change in our world, our inner world first must be changed. And thank God today, He will change your inner world. And everything that brings us down, everything that pulls us down, the Lord is going to use the key of heaven, grace. And then your life internally first is changed. Congratulations. And let me look at this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. He says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. What does that mean? A new creature. A changed creature, a transformed creature. Tell me, Pastor, how do I become a new creature, a transformed creature? And what does that mean for me? The old creature says, I cannot. I don't know. I can't learn. My brain is dead. The old, the old creature says, you cannot teach the old dog new tricks. I am down, I am down, old creature. I'm ignorant, I'm ignorant, old creature. I have no strength, I have no power, old creature. But then you come to Christ. And Christ comes into you. He doesn't have a negative. Only has a positive. Negative brings failure. Negative brings uh, discouragement. I cannot run like other people. I cannot walk like other people. I cannot read like other people are reading. I cannot make anything powerful like other people. Then Christ comes into you. And you come into Christ. And you are no more negative. You are positive. I am positive. I am positive. I have become a new creature. I used to say I cannot. Now I say I can. I used to say I am down. And no matter what you try, I am down. Now I say I am all. Now I am positive. Can you do that? Yes, I can. Can you go there? Yes, I can. Can you learn that? Yes, I can. Can you fabricate that? Yes, I can. Can you study science? Yes, I can. The negative has now gone. The old personality is now gone. I am an introvert. 
I can't look up. I'm always looking down. I am shy. I cannot go beyond this boundary. The Lord has come to my life. He has changed me. The Lord will come to your life. He will change you in Jesus' name. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. How does that happen? Titus chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 11. Titus chapter 2, reading from verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. Grace comes. And that is the basis of the change in the inner world. The grace of God has appeared unto all men. The same grace that changed me, that same grace will change you. The same grace that changed every man you have ever known, every woman you have, you have ever known, that same grace is available today. That grace will change you. And when that change comes, teaching us to deny ungodliness and what they lost. That we, not, we should not live soberly. 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 There are people in their old life, they, they are not sober, they jest. They laugh at nothing. Their character is unserious. They cannot think, they cannot plan, and they cannot set a goal for their life. They're just clowns. If they're in a class, they're the people to, you know, while the teacher is teaching, uh, they're scrolling, they're whatever, and they're playing whatever game they see there. They are not sober-minded. Now the grace of God comes into my life. Instead of play, play, play all the time, I am sober now. I'm thinking of my future. Instead of being a companion of Mr. Not, not doing well, or Mrs. or Miss not doing well, I am sober now. I know that if I follow that crowd, I will end up in mediocrity. And I want to be a person that fulfills my goal. Now he's sober. Somebody said, show me five of your best friends. If they're all drunkards, you'll be number six. You'll become a drunk man. Somebody says, show me five of your best friends. You're moving with them, you're eating with them, you're sleeping with them, you're doing everything with them. It said, if they are non entities, you'll be number six. You'll be a non entity. It says, Shows me, show me five of your best friends. If they have no goal, 
if they have no future, if they have no plan, if they are not sober and serious, if they are mis mister not doing well, it says you will be number six because you will be like five of your most familiar friends. But you come to Christ and you see that the inner change has now happened. And you cannot move with those people again. Your life has purpose now. Your life has direction now. Your life has vision now. Your life is going to make a mark in your world. Internally, there's a change. The grace of God comes into our lives. Teaching us that we should live soberly. And righteously. In the past, we are not thinking of righteously. We are thinking of pleasure for the body. And the pleasure for the body may mean gluttony. The only thing we do, and the only thing we remember we're doing, I eat, I eat, I eat. And sometimes it's only drinking and drinking and drinking. Sometimes it's playing all that a game you find on the phone. That's the occupation. But now a new life has come because you have Christ. You live righteously. And then it says, and godly in this present world. Godly in this present world. That's what godly is talking about the attributes and the nature and the character of God. Like father, like son. Like the family, like the daughter. You now have the family of God as your own family. And the nature of God as your nature. Now you live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. And so because grace has now come. Grace will produce, listen, grace in your life. Grace will produce grace in your life. What does that mean? Now you have a change in your inner world. Grace, I'm going to spell it for you. G, go beyond the average. By grace. You see, there are people, they do something, they say that's good enough. Average. There are some people, they think something, you know, they say that's too far. If everybody in the world will be like them, nobody will manufacture even bicycle. They say our forefathers was right, they were riding horse. Our forefathers they were riding the ass to go somewhere. Why should you think a manufacture bicycle? They say this is good enough. Average. If everybody was like them, nobody will manufacture motorcycle. Nobody will manufacture a car. If everybody was like them, once you have the Volkswagen, nobody will manufacture BMW. Mm. 
they are average. As the new life comes into you, you even say the car of whatever make is not enough, then you are now thinking, how can we have aeroplane? Are those not the people that change the world? That the world of motion, the world of command, of commerce, the world of education, the world of different scientific subjects. Number one, G, that the people that go beyond the average by grace. And that's how to not go beyond where you have been because your inner world is changed. I rely on the Almighty for grace. Rely on the Almighty is all sufficient is all powerful whatever is there that you want to do research on is gone there before you don't look back god is in front don't look down god is on high don't look into the dark world. God is light. And it is that faith in him. You rely on the almighty for grace. That's how the change in a man will not go beyond the average that you knew in the past. G, go. R, rely. A, advance despite adversities in grace. When, when grace comes into us, adversities may be all around. The things that will stop you, they may be all around. Hindrances may be all around. And the thing that will pin you down, put you down, and make you remain down, they may all be around. Adversities and challenges, adversities and difficulties may be all around. But when you have the grace of God, do you remember Enoch? Enoch was born at the time when the flood was near. You remember Noah? Noah was in the midst of the flood. And yet they advanced in the midst of adversities. You will advance. Are you there? I said you will advance. The grace of God will come into your inner world and change your inner world in Jesus' name. See, change your attitude and become graceful change your attitude your attitude to people change your attitude you don't know who will bring the success into your life you don't know who will hand over the rope into the well where you are falling and say grab it and then it will pull you up You don't know what will become a friend and then see your situation 
And he says, my dad can help you. And my principal can help you. A schoolmaster can help you. Change your attitude to people. Change your attitude to problems. Without problems, there'll be no solution. If everything was easy, if everything was just all right, if there was no movement at all, and whatever you put there, you always come there and you always see it. There'll be no improvement. But to every action, there's a reaction. Every object is physics. Every object will remain there, except there's an outside force that comes to move that object. When objects are moved, that's a problem. But change your attitude to the problems. Change your attitude to poverty. I am poor. My father is poor. My ma is poor. Our family is poor. And therefore we remain like that. God had a purpose in bringing you to that family to be born in that family. And all the trend of poverty in your family, you are the best thing that the Lord has sent to that family. Your attitude is different. You say, I will change the poverty in this family. Attitude to people. Where is smile? Where is smile? And then attitude to problems. The problems will not beat you back. The problem will give you an inner strength. I'm going to be a change agent. Your attitude to poverty. This will not keep me down. I am rising up. G go. R rely. A advance. C change. E expect high achievement through grace. Expect. 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 Many years ago, I didn't know that I could do anything that matter in the world. I couldn't go beyond all the people around me. I was like them, they were like me. Until something changed. Expect, expect, expect. I, I, I just carried my name around. And I didn't know what it meant. That is why I said, change your attitude to people. Somebody will come to you and tell you what you have never known about yourself. Somebody will come around and give you a gift that you will spend that will move you forward. Somebody will say something common that will make you uncommon. They might say, who are you? What are you? What have you done? They'll say, one, two, three, four. 
And the fellow looking at you might say, is that all? If you get offended, he didn't praise me. He didn't appreciate me. You miss the point. Is that all? Is that all you are created for? Is that all you are capable of? Is that all you can construct? The man did not even praise me and did not appreciate me. He only said, is that all? When somebody comes into your life like that, and he asks that a hundred million safer question, is that all? Then you begin to think, is that all I'm created for? Is that all I can do? Is that all I can amount to? So somebody came and asked me my name. And I told him my name. Then he told me, do you know the meaning of that name? I said it's just a good name I like now. He told me the meaning that refocused my life. A simple question. Is that all? And your life is refocused today. And you expect from today high achievement through the grace of God. Number one is grace. Number two is goal. Uh, you know football, we cannot play football very well with purposeful strength, except there is a goal post. It's the goal that makes us wake up in the morning and we say, that's where I'm going. It's the goal that makes us look at the week and we say, a few days still remains for the week. That is what I'm going to focus on. It's a goal that makes us to know I am different from him. I'm different from her. Although they are happy with the level they have reached, I am going beyond. Without the goal, there is no game of life. And the goal you have, the goal that drives you, even when you are tired, I will do one stretch more. I will go one step more. I will rise one step higher. It's the thing that keeps the propeller of your car, the propeller of your heart, the propeller of your life rolling all the time. I am going somewhere. What goal do you have in life? What are you driving at in life? What one thing are you going to achieve in life that you say, once this is done, I will know I am not just there flying over the sky like a bird without a definite achievement. The Lord wants us to have a goal. Look at Matthew chapter 5. And look at 
verse 13. <clears throat> it says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the salt of the earth. Have you ever thought about this? The salt looks like sugar. Ground sugar. And then the salt. They look alike. But they have different functions. I look like Mr. So and so. But I have a different destiny. I look like Miss so and so. But we have a different goal. Ye are the salt of the earth. There are some people, they say the world is bad. The world is corrupt. There's nothing we can do. And you're trying to make a change and take away the corruption and the smell and the odor. Nothing changes. And so they say, if you cannot change them, join them. Ye are the salt of the earth. There is a goal. There is a challenge. There is something the salt will do that pepper cannot do. That onion cannot achieve. That vegetables cannot achieve. The salt of the earth. Now, vegetable is good. Onion is good. All those other ingredients are good. Let them do their own. That's their destiny. That's their purpose for creation. But me, I'm different. You will not abandon your goal and your desire because you see another person and is making history in his own line. And then it says in verse 14, in verse 14 it says, Ye are the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world. Light functions well where there is darkness. But the light does not curse or fight the darkness. The people that go through life criticizing our country, our country is corrupt. Our community is bad. Everybody is uh, walking in darkness. They tell me that it's better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. If they are, if they are dark, how about you? If they are corrupt, how about you? If they are bad, how about you? That's why you were created by God. That's why you came to Christ. That you become the light of the world. And where it is darkest, that is where you shine. The light has purpose. There is natural light. There is manufactured light. Have you heard of Thomas Edison? He wanted to provide all these electric bulbs and light. 
And then he raised up a kind of laboratory. And he began walking. He wanted to have kind of filament that will bring light to the community. He tried the first experiment, he failed. Second, he failed. Tenth, he failed. One hundred times, he failed. More than six hundred, seven hundred times, he failed. But he said, I will. He said, I can. He said, I must. And he kept on and on and on. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes our problem is we know what to do. We know God has raised us up to do this. Like a preacher. He goes to preach in one place. He failed. Second time, he failed. Third time, he failed. He said, there's no way there. And then he comes to another thing. And without learning, without any apprenticeship, he tried this again. He failed. Second time, he failed. A few times, he failed. He drops that. He becomes himself an unfinished product. And he says, I am a failure. Thomas Edison. After 800, 900 times, he kept on failing. Uh, but you know, the tortoise does not make progress until he sticks his head out. When a tortoise wants to make progress, the first thing it does is to stick his neck out. And Thomas Edison said, I'll do it again. I'll try it again. I'll make it again. He succeeded. And you are going to succeed. I said you are going to succeed. Failure might come. Somebody asked him, do you see that you have failed? said no. No. I have discovered 600, 700 ways that cannot work, that will not work. I'll try another way. You are not a failure. Say, I am not a failure. Say it very well. You, have, you are not a failure. You have done things that didn't work, that failed, but you are not a failure. And you are going to try another way again. This new way will bring success in your life. How do I have a goal? Because without a goal, I cannot play the game of life very well. G in goal is get to the Alpha and the Omega. Get to him. You've been turning your back on him. You've been walking without the light of heaven. You've been trying your best. Human best is not up to God's best. I want to have a goal in life. I want to do something in life. I want to know why I am created. I want to know what I will follow and succeed. 
goal begins with a G. G, get to the Alpha and Omega. O, observe the achievers and the overcomers. Sir, how did you overcome your challenges? Sir, how did you achieve so great in the midst of challenges? Observe them. There are many books in our libraries that gives us all the wisdom of the people of the past. The manufacturers, the achievers, the experts, the heroes in every area of study. We get their books, then the library. Now, internet and the media, social media has made all the information available. I want to be a scientist. Look for the achievers. You'll find them there online. I want to be a motivational speaker. Go to the YouTube. You'll find them there. I want to, I want to be a successful doctor. And go to the library and go to all those, uh, all the encyclopedia. You're going to find them there. I want to find somebody who was down, but that is up. I want to read about people who were shattered in life, and scattered in life, but now everything has come back. There were people that even had accidents and they were paralyzed from their ways downwards and yet they succeeded in life. Go check up on them and observe the achievers and the overcomers. As you read about them, you, you will find I found a man. This man was so down. He was about to commit suicide. And as he was there to commit suicide, he, he just decided, okay, before I commit that suicide, let me go to one church and hear what they say, and then after that, I'm gone. And he entered into a church. And the preacher didn't know his story. Did not know he was about to commit suicide. And he said, receive Jesus into your heart. And everything you are sorrowful about, it will clear them away. He said, you have tried everything. You have not tried Jesus. That made the man to begin to sing. He dropped all the instruments and the pills of suicide. His life turned around. He became one of the greatest men in his own nation. I'm talking to my brother there. I'm talking to my daughter there, my son there. You're going to become one of the greatest people in your own nation. Get to the Alpha and the Omega. Observe the achievers and overcomers. A, accept is abundance and operations. Accept, open your heart. Open your mind. And accept is abundance and operations. 
you are getting there. You will get there. El labor for the advancement of others. Labor for the advancement of others. There were two people at the shore of a stream, of a sea. One can swim, but the other cannot swim. And the one who can swim, he wasn't interested in plunging, diving into the sea because it was cold. And the one who could not swim appealed to him, Sir, can you take me to the shore? Because of that one that could not swim. The one who could swim, he took him on his back. And then he got to the other shore. In his mind, he was taking the other one to the shore. But while helping him, he himself got to the shore. Help enough people to achieve their goal. Lo and behold, God will make you achieve your goal. Number three now. In number three, we're looking at the glory in changing an indifferent world. Glory. The next time I see you, I see glory on your face. Glory in your life. Glory in your achievement. You will achieve in Jesus' name. I'm reading now from the Word of God in Philippians chapter, chapter 2 and verse 5. Philippians chapter 2 and we're looking at verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. There are different kinds of mind. Satan, the devil, has his own mind. They never do well, they have a mind. The achiever has a mind. And Christ has a mind. And he says, make your choice. Make your choice. The mind of Satan. The mind of bad people. Or the mind of Christ. And he says, let this mind be in you. You know what that means? It says, open the door and let this mind enter into you. The mind of Christ. The nature of Christ. The help of Christ. The answer of Christ to every problem in your life. Your life will produce glory. My life. My life will produce glory. If you see it and see it and see it and think of it all the time, you will get there. Glory now. G, give with faith in God. That's what Christ did. Give. Give your heart to God. Give your heart to Christ. 
Give your personality to the Holy Spirit. Give your service to your neighbor. Let your life be a life of giving. Selfish, stingy people never go to glory. Me, me, me all the time. That does not have a glorious outcome. Give your life unto God and to his creatures by faith in Christ. El lighting with fire for God. It says John was a burning and a shining light. Don't be sluggish, tired, weak, spineless, spineless, no spine, no backbone. And the person that is always looking down, I carry a heavy load, I'm carrying my cross, life is difficult. Sometimes on the mountain, immediately I come back again, don't do it like that. Cheer up! And then lighten your environment with the grace of God in your life. Occupy without falsehood. You're doing something. I'm going to contribute to the progress of the world. Anything good going on around me, I want to be a contributor. I want to get occupied. Occupied and happy. Occupied and hopeful. Occupied and holy. I want to be occupied in good things going on around me. That's what leads us to glory. R is to reflect the faithfulness of God. People don't know God. I want to reflect God in my action. People can't see God. I want to reflect God in my attitude. By my joy, my excitement, and my happiness in life, I want to reflect God to everybody around me. That is how to get to glory. Yield fruit in fullness. To God. The Lord today will change you your inner world. And then he'll make you have a goal that will change the world, your immediate world. And glory will come upon your life. Glory will, glory will settle on the work of your hand. Everywhere you go, glory will follow you. Everywhere you turn, glory will turn around with you. You will never be in a strange land where there is no helper. Keep all that the Lord has revealed to us here. You will have a testimony of glory. Power in your life. Goodness of God in your life. Joy in your life. You will not die prematurely. Go through life with a different attitude. Glory has come. Where? I said glory has come. Where has that glory come? On who? On who? From now on, I carry glory. The same grace I have, you will have. 
the good goals I have at your heart. And the glory Christ has given me, the Lord, the same God that you serve, and we serve together, he'll give you the same glory. Rise up and receive. Rise up and receive. Everybody will have the grace that it takes to live a life that will change the inner world. Open your mouth, open your mouth, talk to the Lord in prayer. Oh Lord, I am here. I want that change. I want that charge. I want that challenge. I want the championship. So that I'm on top everywhere I go. Pray to the Lord is answering your prayer right now. Give your life to the Lord. Give your heart to the Lord. He will change you himself. He will have glory in your life. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You will be. You will be. What God has created you to be. You will do. What God has appointed you to do. You are getting there by his grace. In Jesus name we pray. Everybody raise up your hand now. Believe. That today is a turning point in your life. Yeah. Rest of that hand. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We thank you because you have called us to change. Yeah. We pray that your mighty hand will make a definite change in the inner world of our lives in Jesus name a, a definite change a mighty change a visible change a permanent change the past is forgotten the past is forgiven. The past is now in the depths of the sea. A new life for everyone. A new heart for everyone. A new attitude in everyone. Defeat is gone. Success has come. Victory has come. Lord, I pray that you reveal to everyone now that has the grace of God the goal for you creating them here on earth. The goal of an achiever. The goal of an overcomer. The goal of a winner. In every heart now, in Jesus' name. And I pray you take everyone by the hand. And lead everyone to your glory. My brother there, my sister there, lead them up to glory. My son there, my daughter there, lead everyone to glory. Let the light begin to shine in every life. Anything that is handed over to you, given to you, cannot fail. They have handed themselves over to you, Lord. Make 
a new star out of everyone that is handed over to you. Lock away the past from every mind. Open the door to a glorious future for everyone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Where is the achiever now? What do you see? Heaven is looking for you. Where are you? What is that sister there? Where is that brother there? Achievers. Achievers. Everywhere you go, the power to achieve is following after you. Achievers. Good morning. God bless you.